So let's look at the interface of the database buffer. The database buffer supports the following methods. There's a get method that returns a reference to the page X. So you can request any page from the database buffer. There's a fix method. It fixes a page, which means it may not be evicted anymore. So it may not be removed from the database buffer anymore. This is, of course, required if anyone is operating on the page the page must not be evicted from the buffer, it must not be removed as long as anyone is working on it. Of course, then there's an unfix operation. This may be called to signal the buffer that the page may be removed. Of course, if multiple operations are working on the same page, there has to be a counting mechanism making sure that whenever you, you fix a page, you increase a counter, when you unfix, you decrease a counter. Then there's a predicate telling you whether the page is already in the buffer. So if the buffer contains a page, this will return true. And finally, there's a choose page method. It chooses a page to evict and returns a reference to the page. This is very important to make room in the buffer. So usually there's not enough space. So eventually you have to kick out pages. So you have to choose a victim, a victim page to remove. And this is determined by the choose page method. And how that is implemented has a huge impact on the performance of the buffer. So let's look at how get is implemented. How do we implement that? What happens if we call this method? So if we are interested in a particular page, page X, what happens is the buffer checks whether it already has that page, of course. If the page sits already in the buffer, we don't have to do much more. So check whether the page already exists. And if it doesn't exist, we have to do something, which means we have to read that page from the layer underneath. Let's assume it's hard disk. We have to read it from the hard disk into the buffer. But in order to be able to do that, we first have to make sure that there is some space available for the page to be read. Those spaces are called slots. So basically, if you have a buffer, a database buffer, it uses a number of slots. Those slots correspond to pages. Those are empty pages that can be used to store data. So we first have to make sure that there are some empty slots, some empty page available that can be used to read this block PX from hard disk. So is there space to load a page? And if not, yeah, no empty page available, we first have to kick out a page that sits currently in the buffer. That is where the choose page algorithm kicks in. So here we choose a page to remove. But hey, then in this situation, we also have to check whether that page is dirty. So dirty means this page is not in the same version as the version on disk. This happens, of course, if it was changed in main memory. If someone changed the page, but that page was not written to disk yet, we call this page a dirty page. The page is always, if you have the page here on hard disk, again, let's assume this is hard disk, this is main memory, it's the same page, I, P, I, P, I. So if this is exactly the same version as on disk, this is a clean page, we don't have to do anything. But if it was modified, say it's some PI prime, then we call this a dirty page. A dirty page because it differs from the page on disk. And then we have to do something. So typically here we flush PI to external memory. We write it somewhere. We don't want to lose the changes done to PI. That has to be done here. Yeah, and then we have an empty slot available. So if here in this situation we have an empty slot, we simply have to pick an empty slot. So there should be another method. It's basically the list of the free slots. And then you pick one of those free slots. And this S gives you the free slot to use for reading. In either case, so be it that you kick out a page first to get a free slot or you already have a free slot, what you do is you read the page you're interested in, this PX into the free slot. Let's call it S. So, what I, so if, you, if you were in this branch, what I mean by S is the slot that was occupied by PI. That is what is being used here. So after this operation, you have PX in main memory. Then you fix that page. That's important. This avoids that it is evicted by any call to choose page. 
and then you return a reference to that page. So what's important to keep in mind here are the costs that may occur. So let's, let's look at the costs. So on a high level, you may think, okay, the page is not there. I have to read it. So what may happen in the worst case is there's a random access on the hard disk. That's all that may happen, but that's not true. There may be many more costs here involved. So what happens here is just to look up in main memory whether the page is already there. You support that with some data structure, of course, but it's relatively cheap. So that's not so much of a problem. The problem happens here. So if you don't have an empty slot available, you have to choose a page that's also all main memory, some little computation, that's all fine. It's not expensive, it's okay. But here you have a problem. If you have a dirty page that first has to be flushed, it may involve a random I.O. operation, a random write. If you overwrite it over the old blocker, even if it's shadow paging, if you have to move the hard disk head here, it may involve a random I.O. operation, a write operation. This is relatively expensive. So this is expensive. Let's write an E for that. Yeah, then again in this branch get a free slot. This is just a main memory determining in the main memory list of free pages. That, that's, that's not so expensive. Of course reading, that is costs something. So reading of course requires an I.O. operation, typically random I.O. read operation. Then fixing is cheap here and returning reference is also cheap. So bottom line, what happens here is even though you're only interested in a single page, Actually, you're performing, in the worst case, two random write operations to retrieve a single page. So the worst case is something like two random IOs for doing that. That is important to keep in mind. And therefore, many implementations of the database buffer try to avoid these costs by writing out changed pages in a separate thread. So you shouldn't keep the page too long in main memory without writing it back to hard disk and for many reasons, also for transactional reasons. But here th this is simply a performance reason. So you want to avoid this branch here in the computation. You want to avoid to actually trigger a random I.O. operation for writing at this point in time. So, so if the page you chose here is not dirty, it's already equal to what uh, sits on, on disk, then you don't run into this branch and then this is relatively cheap. So bottom line, what the get operation does in the database buffer is not only returning the reference to that page, it may first make room for the new page as explained here, then it reads the actual page. In summary, this may lead to two random IO operations. And what's very important is this choose page algorithm. There are, there are different implementations of that and how this may be implemented, we will look at in another video. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.